There remain enormous challenges for cardiac arrhythmias worldwide. Over 300 million people have cardiac arrhythmias. 30 million have atrial fibrillation, and 6 million people die of sudden cardiac death annually throughout the world. One of the greatest opportunities we have to solve these major problems in arrhythmia care is to be able to bring a diversity of ideas to these problems. Stanford um, has a history of being a very entrepreneurial, and we always uh, dream out of the box of the world, if you may. So we want to take that spirit into the Stanford Arrhythmia Center and try to solve problems and look in a completely different way. It is really the first center we have that can bridge uh, to different schools in the university, including the School of Engineering, School of Business, a School of Humanities, um, as well as a global uh, population health research. We've got straight clinicians, translational scientists, bioengineers, computer scientists, computational physicists, and all those people at some level, although they're working in their own directions, in many ways, the Stanford Arrhythmia Center finds a way to thread them together. At Stanford, I run the Cardiac Surgery Arrhythmia uh, Research Laboratory, and uh, we are trying to create high-density mapping for uh, mapping arrhythmias with the new polymer which was really pioneered by one of the true out, uh, true, uh, truly outstanding stars of the chemical engineering department here at Stanford. The reason that mapping is hard is that the signals that mapping is based on are very complicated. A lot of noise, it's like sifting through all the background noise on a cell phone. How do you get the, the voice? So how do we find the true signal? So for that we went back and did experiments in patients. We took inspiration from some very elegant basic work and develop computational methods to filter the maps or to map. We're looking at entirely new avenues in trying to approach these problems. For example, we're trying to develop a little device that can walk the inside the heart like a moon rover can. Any research discovery is confined within the walls of your research lab unless you translate it. And so Stanford is focused on taking this beyond the boundaries of the university and trying to impact as many people as possible. And that's been done in many different ways. So there is a formal biodesign program where students, including some of our fellows actually have gone, have been asked to identify an unmet need and then come up with a company idea, write patents as part of their fellowship and then hopefully form a company. But the biodesign ethic taking something and taking it beyond the boundaries of, of your lab really permeate everything we do here. I am the director of the Inherited uh, Arrhythmia Clinic. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity uh, for discovery in, in the inherited arrhythmic disorders. Uh, we have a team of electrophysiologists, uh, nurses that, that uh, concentrate a lot on uh, talking with and, and helping to manage uh, families and we have a, a team of genetic counselors. Genetic counselors that really are focused on cardiovascular disease. So it really takes this team effort uh, to not only treat the patient that comes to us, but the entire family. When I'm not seeing patients, I'm actually uh, running a pretty broad research program in what we call outcomes research. And that is looking at the quality of care for many of the things we do, such as these ablation procedures and other procedures we use to treat these heart rhythm disorders. In that, um, what my lab does is we use massive amounts of data with very large data sets of 10, sometimes 20 million patients, and look at those to look at insights and the quality of care that patients are getting and being able to figure out how we can optimize that care and even predict risk. Think about the Cardiovascular Institute as interdisciplinary nucleus that provides organizational structure to concentrate and coordinate the activities of physicians, scientists, bioengineers, and educators who are committed to improving cardiovascular health and also treating and training the next generation of leaders in cardiovascular medicine at Stanford. So I think really excited to see the young uh, people um, you know, engaged and they're coming to the conference, excited about what to do, excited about bringing their own ideas. And I think that's really what is uh, the, the really making us all come to work every day and enjoy the process as well. And finally, hopefully help our patients. It's all about collaboration, bringing people together and to be able to solve these problems as a group. I'm really optimistic that we can do that, do things we've never imagined.